Hey there, I'm Kevin Alvis. I play Team Travis on Yellow Jackets, and I'm just hanging out here in the man cave with Elias. Kevin, welcome to, uh, thanks for returning to the cave, actually. I was going to say welcome to the cave, but thanks for returning back to the cave. Thanks. I'm excited. Exciting time for you, man, huh? Yeah, it's been, it's been a great, it's been a little while since we did this, but uh, no, it's been yeah. exciting. It's been a great, uh, great year for, uh, for TV. That's right. And uh, the listeners and the viewers now can see you uh, as Team Travis on Yellow Jackets, uh, season two of Lock and Key. So yeah, you've been uh, hustling along the last few years since we last talked. Yeah, it's it's been good. I've been really fortunate to get to work, you know, through through the pandemic and, and continuing onwards. It's been uh, I've just been really grateful to work on some pretty cool shows. Yeah. Now, for the listeners, the viewers, uh, on our original interview, our first time we talked about how you got into the acting world, everything. So if they if they want to learn about that, they're going to have to go back to the old interview and then come back and listen to this one. But <laughs> yeah, we're going to jump right into Yellow Jackets, man. Uh, how exciting has this been uh, this project been for you? Oh, this is, uh, this has been huge. Sorry, let me re-answer that. Hold on. Um, no, this has been, this has been huge. This has been an exciting time. Uh, Yellow Jackets, I got, I got word on doing this show a week after I finished shooting Lock and Key season Oh, wow. Two. So it was, uh, just a whirlwind of like going right from one thing to the next thing. And, uh, it was super exciting. Um, and yeah, right from the get go, I got to sit down with the creators and, and the EPs of the show and, and just kind of talk through this character and really make sure that we did it justice trying to create as much of a three dimensional character as humanly possible. So yeah. it was cool. Well, now, how did you, uh, did you audition this while you were filming Lock and Key season two or uh, was it before that? Um, no, it was literally back to back. So I think. I shot my final scene of Lock and Key, I want to say a week and three days, pretty much, like before I pre auditioned for this. And then mm. it was within a week, I had done a retape and, uh, and, and uh, a callback for Yellow Jackets, and then it was signed. So it was, it was a really quick process in terms of, in terms of getting on Yellow Jackets. Um, so yeah, cause as an actor, you know, you finish one job and you're just not sure what, what's going to happen next. A lot of the yeah. time, a lot of times not pre-planned, but in this case I had no waiting, which is super cool. Now, did you originally go in for uh, team Travis or? Yeah, it was, uh, well with team Travis, he's the only, uh, teenage boy on the show. Um, I have my younger brother, Javi, and we have the coach who's in his, uh, late twenties, okay. I believe. Um, uh, and so it was the only role possible and he didn't even exist when they shot the pilot. This role was added in after mm. the show got picked up. Um, and it was just, it was really cool to kind of like join a cast that had already done this pilot. And so I auditioned for team Travis. They gave me some scenes, um, all the way from episode four. And, uh, and uh, I think that's what, uh, that's what we sent in and, and then boom, here we were. Yeah. A few weeks ago, I had Jane Wood up on and uh, we were talking about how like how everything was like with the scheduling and everything like this was filmed before COVID really kicked in, right? A couple episodes and you guys have to shut down. Yeah, so that's when they did the pilot. They did, okay. they did, they did the pilot, I believe it was December 2019. All and right. then COVID hit and the show only got picked up and only started shooting at the beginning of this year. Wow. Uh, it was a fast turnaround for us to do the show. We started May and then um yeah we wrapped october and then this show came out right in november so super fast turnaround for this show yeah when cool. uh Jane's fantastic when you have like when you're interacting with like fans family and friends how do you describe this show to them it's really hard because it's genre bending right like they're with different genres but i always try and uh and explain to them that it's a show about a plane crash that leads to a lot of secrecy and a lot of twisted uh, ransom uh, 25 years in the future. And, and I make it clear that our show is a thriller yet has some horror and, and drama all mixed into one. And I always try and make sure that everyone understands that I just think the characters are so well written um, and that there's gonna be a lot of depth because you know it's not just a, it's not a scare factor type show it's it's it has horror in it but it's it's got real meat in the story like when it comes to the drama now it's funny because like uh 
you know, the girls, the, the teen girls on the show, they were able to like maybe like interact with the older cast members to figure out how they're going to play this character. You don't have that. Well, no, as well, kind of, you don't have yeah, that. Spoiler alert. Um, yeah. I don't get to interact with older Travis very much. Yeah. Um, and no, I actually never got to even meet him on set. Um, but that allowed me as much as that was, you know, a little sad that I didn't get to do that. It, it also allowed me the freedom to kind of dive into this character on my own and, and decide, right. you know, which direction I want to go with. Luckily, I had such a huge amount of help from Ashley and Mark, the creators, and all our directors. Everyone was so good at collaborating in terms of, I felt like I could go to anyone and ask what's going on. You know, do we believe this? What can we change here? And I remember right from the get go, when they sat me down for my first meeting, we had a big talk about where this character was going to go and how we were going to like what my questions were. And so I got lots of answers right from the beginning. Awesome. Lisa, like, so how much detail did you get for the background of Travis before you even like started filming your scenes? Or did you have any, any input on your character too? Like how you want to play him? Um, it felt super collaborative through the whole process. That's okay. for sure. Um, okay. But I just also trusted the writing so much. Um, and so it was kind of a combination of the two. Now, in terms of backstory, that was the one question I had is when I spoke with Bart and Ashley the first time, I, I just asked them, you know, I don't need to know what's happening in the future always, but is there anything that's going to come out about his past that's mm -hmm. going to inform his future? Because that's really important to know, um, to be able to play the character with justice uh, and, and have all the little nuances that I wanted uh, to have there. And honestly, I felt like it was a learning process this whole season, like really learning more and more about Travis and more and more about, you know, each of his the little folds within him. Yeah. Wow. Now, like, what did, what did you love the most about this character? Um, the complexities, because, you know, I would argue that Travis is a good guy deep down, but makes a lot of really poor decisions. Mm -hmm. And I could, I knew that right from the get go that he was not going to make good decisions. And I guess, uh, there was something fun about that because, um, you know, I got to love this character for a long time and champion everything that he did. And then when I watched the show, I got to be a viewer and kind of hate everything that he did. And so <laughs> there was this nice juxtaposition between, between what I got to do working and what I got to do when I was watching. Cause he's a, he's a boy in 1996. Yeah. In 1996, uh, never mind today still make, they make very bad decisions, but in 1996, you know, um, he made a lot of bad choices. And, uh, and so the complexities of that was intriguing to me. Um, to play someone pretty far off from myself and uh, and that that was that was an exciting challenge and someone who was there to support female driven stories you know this is this is not a this is not my show this is not a a, a man's show this is you know this is this is a story for everyone this is a very human show but it's championed by amazing female performers and uh, and and just overall, it, the show was incredible. Um, the performers, uh, they did such a great job. All of, all of them. Um, yeah, all of, all of our cast um, and even even the, the, the males, uh, non-binary uh, females, everyone did an incredible job on the show. So it was, it was nice to just be a support system and be part of such a big ensemble cast. How, like, when you were reading the script, like, how long before you, you kind of knew that future Travis, older Travis doesn't make it. Did you know well, right away? I, I kind of knew pretty, <laughs> pretty, okay. pretty early on. Um, we, you know, it's such an early episode that so quickly in the process, we got to find out mm. and uh, what happened. And it was just nice to see how, how important, I think the thing that surprised me the most was to just see how important he still to this day was to Natalie. And then, and then that became, that informed me tremendously because I was like, I need to make sure that this is going to become something that does affect uh, their lives that much that for 25 years, they're going to be a part of each other's lives in some capacity, yeah. whether it's the whole time or not. You mentioned Natalie, uh, she's played by Sophie. Uh, how do you like describe the chemistry like between you two and the way it evolves throughout the show? Sophie Thatcher is such a professional and actually we just spoke last night about this because we both just finished watching all the way up to episode 10 now so we've okay. seen everything now and um, we just 
we have so much mutual respect for each other that on set it made it easy um, to not to to just allow ourselves to do the work and and be good friends and 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 push the story forward as best as we could and and tell honest um, an honest portrayal of of these kids that are just trying to figure it out um, and luckily we got to do our first real chemistry based episode with uh, Deepa Mehta who is a very actor's director and so uh, we got to work with her and it, it helped us build a good foundation for the rest of for the rest of the episodes which was great was there ever a time when you guys were like rehearsing the, like the scenes and everything were like oh maybe you should do it this way like like bounce ideas off each other um a little bit but honestly I just think Sophie is super talented I, I never wanted to have her have to do anything a different right. way like she, her instincts are incredible. And, and she, I think we just mutually respected each other's choices. And if we ever had questions, we asked each other, but mm -hmm. I don't think, um, I don't think that we ever had to worry about questioning what, what we were doing because we both trusted that we were, we were just trying to give these characters the best chance at success. That's all it yeah. was. Yeah. How was it working with the rest of the cast now? I know, is there anybody that you wish you had more scenes with? Um, well, actually, I just wish that I got to work with the, uh, the 25 year later cast. Right. <laughs> I think that, you know, being in 1996, we're, we're the only, we're working with only the younger cast. And, uh, I would have loved to work with the present day cast who, who are just so talented. Uh, Melanie Linsky is one of my favorite people and has been so supportive of all of us throughout this entire journey and, um, and continues to just deliver just amazing work each episode and mm. i think if i had a choice as to someone i really like to work with it would have been uh, melanie just because i know how amazing she is in person because she's probably the person from the 25 year later cast that i got to interact with the most and have a couple conversations how was it like filming outside all those a few well how many you said you did it you weren't into like episode four but uh all those all those uh, episodes yeah it was uh it was it was cool. Um, we we kind of felt like we had a second home. So all of us okay. uh, were being put up at this hotel, like down the street from where we were filming all the outside stuff whenever we had to go out there because then we could get to and from the set faster instead of going all the way to downtown um, to where our places were. And uh, it just kind of allowed us uh, to kind of make it a second home. And um, the crew, I, you know, I, that's who I feel bad for. They worked so hard, so many long hours on this show. This, this crew did such a spectacular job and, and to see the long days that they put in to get, to get this show made out outside, like for, for us, you know, we're there four days out of seven, you know, the crew's there seven days. And so I'm sure it was a lot tougher on them than us. Um, but they, they were troopers and, uh, and, and the cast. Yeah, it was, it was fun. I, I think, especially in the summer, we loved being outside together. We would have lunch like out in a field and they would just, it, it was a really nice experience uh, when it came to shooting outdoors and, um, and it was beautiful. Like, and you see in the, some of the oh, scenes, yeah. it was beautiful. Some of the stuff turned out just amazing. There's a couple of scenes um, that happen um, at this Creek. And, and when you see those scenes, it's just, it's it's just wow, so sweet. yeah unreal uh, favorite scene for kevin alves for teen travis that you could talk about at least yeah yeah we'll start we'll we'll do everything uh episode episode six prior because that's when we're doing this so um i think honestly it has to be my scene with uh with steven krueger um we did uh, a comedy a comedy scene almost and it's it's about uh travis uh getting given some condoms from him and uh it was just we had a great time on set making that and um and yeah i can't i can't i can't complain and then ensemble i loved working with everyone so when we got to do this big scene where we did a, a, a shooting competition that was super fun because mm -hmm. uh there were lots of uh, lots of people involved and, and some really high tensions in the scene um, and so I just like working with everyone. So uh, even though that was fun with Steven, I, I think the big group scenes were, were really cool. Yeah. Now, but how, how uh, were you surprised how quickly uh, season two got picked up? Um, not surprised. I love the show. I think Barn Ashley are geniuses. Um, but it was, you know, you're always worried. As an actor, you're, 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 you're always a little worried. You're not sure how people are going to 
how people are going to like the show as you're making. You also don't know how it's going to turn out when you're on set. And to just watch review after review after review come in positively. Like, I think to this day, we're at 45 reviews on Rotten Tomatoes, 100 percent. Like, right, right. I'm so proud of everyone on the show. Um, and the fact that I got to just be a small part in it, like in this amazing, huge machine of a show um, is so cool. And uh, yeah. I'm not surprised because I think that Varnashi created a beautiful world, but I'm super excited. That's for sure. I really am excited to come back and, and get to um, hopefully tell more stories. So yeah, let's uh, talk about uh, locking keys and Javi, man, for season two. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a wild ride. It was really hard to not um, spoil lock and key for people, especially even when it came out like the first few days, because the big plot twist with Javi came such so much later on in the season. Um, and yeah, it was, it was a big, it was, it was hard not to spoil the the demon side of things. And, uh, but it was super fun to play. And, uh, and that I think, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that Javi after his time on the show got to, got to really, you know, make an impact on, on the storyline when it came to uh, the demon side of things and that key. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, which, uh, what's your favorite key? I've asked this question because after I had you on the show, you were my first lock and key guest. Mm-hmm. I had Halia that came on and then I had Jesse that came on. So, oh, my favorite key. Um, it's got to be the anywhere key. Because I, I think also like as a, I think my favorite superpower would be teleportation. So the anywhere key, being able to just open a door and be anywhere. And how ironic is that? So that's part of my death. Right. Um, the anywhere key, but um, but it is still it's my favorite. I I, I love that we get to uh, in that story continue just like switch where you are and be in different mm-hmm. places. Uh, I think uh, the anywhere key, I would I would steal it if it was real for sure. Did you take anything offset after you ended uh, your role? No, I didn't. I didn't take anything, but I got given something that I was so excited for. So I I was technically the only one of the few cast members to wear the varsity jacket okay and so uh i got to keep hobby's varsity jacket which That's is super awesome. cool yeah it's it's awesome i love the matheson jacket it's so, so now cool. so now what's up what's next for you now like you have any other projects you're going to be working on or taking um, some time well, taking some time off i've tried to enjoy some family time after after we finished you know it was a long year shooting lock and key and then shooting yellow jackets back to back was yeah. it was a, a pretty long year for me but um definitely talking about getting into doing some new things when we start the new year and uh and yeah looking into the new possibilities but i've enjoyed some downtime some downtime right. was, was definitely needed that's awesome and uh lastly how can the listeners and the viewers find you on social media uh yeah um i have instagram and um twitter um but uh, not quite not quite big on the tiktok train yet um, but in the future, but yeah, they can check me out on Instagram. It's Kevin Alves. Kevin, man, this was great. Uh, thanks for returning on the show. Thanks so much.